Welcome to another video with Holly. Today's reflection is on a book called Mrs. M by Luke Slattery, which I read a couple of months ago. It follows the life um, of Elizabeth Macquarie. It's a little bit fabricated in that it goes into her, it sort of adds to her um, relationship with the government architect a lot more than the reality was, but otherwise it's quite historically accurate in terms of the her personality, the activities she participated in, the, the, the way that the governor Macquarie um, felt about the colony and, and that sort of thing. And anyway, um, something that she and Governor Macquarie were quite famous for was their respect for the Indigenous people. Now, nowadays we look at them and go respect as if, you know, <laughs> they're white colonists and they systematically murdered thousands and thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands of um, Indigenous people. But there's an incident in the novel where the architect is injured in a fight and the queen of the local tribe, as she calls herself, applies traditional Aboriginal medicine to this man. And when he's taken back by the white people to the hospital, the surgeon says he would have died if it wasn't for this traditional medicine. And Elizabeth Macquarie, who's the main character in the book, really from that time on, and her husband, but more so from her perspective, really respects the Aboriginal medicine and their ways of managing the land. Um, but of course, as a woman, she had very limited power. And while she did try to get them better lives than they did have, and Governor Macquarie did too, you know, this essentially if you're stealing someone's land it's not great anyway uh and it made me think about today um in light of the recent bushfires there's been another big call to allow aboriginal members of the community well each different area to burn in their traditional ways to be in charge of the hazard reduction to do their mosaic burning and there is a lot of there are a lot of Aboriginal people who are saying, we can manage this better than you've been doing if you just give us the chance. And still, 200 odd years later, we're not so good at listening to our Aboriginal brothers and sisters. So that's the lesson that history and literature teaches us today. We have not done a good job listening to our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, and we could probably do that better. See you next time.